Hello, welcome to the Deploy VSRX Instances using AWS CloudFormation Learning Byte. I'm Gordon Mosley with the Education Services Department at Juniper Networks. Let's get started. After watching this Learning Byte, you will understand how to deploy VSRX Instances using AWS CloudFormation. Launching virtual servers or virtual instances of resources in an AWS environment requires the configuration of several components. And creating these components manually takes a lot of time and it leads to issues of scalability and also consistency of resource deployment. Amazon Web Services provides a service called CloudFormation. CloudFormation is used to automate the deployment of Amazon Web Services resources. It's a free service, and it allows you to define the resources that you would like, your infrastructure that you would like to deploy inside of the AWS cloud environment using JSON or YAML formatted templates. Each individual object that you would like to create has a definition in that template. The example you see on the screen is of the definition of an Amazon AWS EC2 instance basically a virtual server instance. And it defines the actual AWS ID, it's called the Amazon Machine Image ID value, and also the instance type or the size of the EC2 instance you would like to launch. And so by defining these resources that I would like to launch inside of the AWS, inside of a cloud formation template, I can upload the cloud formation template to AWS, it can process the file and automatically generate or create or instantiate those same resources that I previously had to define manually. The term for this process, and you may have heard this before, is called infrastructure as code. And here's how the process works in the AWS CloudFormation environment. Once I've defined all my resources inside of my CloudFormation template, I can upload it to AWS. It's stored in what's called an S3 bucket. And then I can use the AWS CloudFormation application to feed the CloudFormation template and allow it to generate, process that template, and then launch all of the defined template resources. The CloudFormation template can be created using the AWS CloudFormation Designer tool. The CloudFormation can be generated based on existing AWS resources. It can be generated using a, a text editor. The editor I use when I'm editing CloudFormation templates is Microsoft Visual Studio Code because it does a really good job of formatting JSON. There's several editors out there that are also capable of doing that. So pick one you like. Now the hard part about getting started with CloudFormation templates is the template itself. And it's a lot of information. If you can imagine that if you've ever launched any resources in a cloud environment, you can see all the individual, think of all the individual resources you have to create. You have to create in the AWS world, your own virtual private cloud environment. You need to define a network range. You need to define subnets, IP addresses, interfaces. So there's several individual components that have to be created even before you can finally decide what instance, what virtual server, for example, you would like to launch. And so a good place to get started, we have in Juniper Education Services, we have a Juniper Cloud Networking with AWS and Azure course, and it explains how to use infrastructure as code to deploy resources in both of these clouds environment, cloud environments. Juniper maintains our own AWS section in GitHub with specific examples free for you to download of cloud formation templates that can be used to deploy VSRX instances in the Amazon cloud environment. And there's also provided by AWS what's called the AWS Cloud Formation User Guide. And all of these resources have examples and use cases that allow you to get up and running and start building your own cloud formation templates that you can use to deploy your resources. In this learning byte, I am going to demonstrate launching a Juniper Networks Virtual SRX or VSRX in the AWS cloud environment. And we're going to use a cloud formation template to do that. And this is an example of the sum of actually the individual components that have to be created before you can launch a VSRX instance. Your virtual private cloud environment, your different subnets, the IP addresses that would be assigned, the interfaces, route tables. 
And again, instead of doing all of this manually, these individual components will be defined in a file using JSON in our example, and we will load that template into the AWS CloudFormation environment and watch the components be instantiated. This is my administrator workstation that I'm going to use for the rest of this learning bite. And this is an example of a cloud formation template. And I used JSON to format this data. Remember, it supports either JSON or YAML. And what you will see here are the individual components that are defined that can be processed. This file will be processed by the AWS cloud formation application and then used to launch and instantiate all these objects. And there's a, there's a parameter section where you define values such as subnets, ranges, and IP addresses that would be assigned to interfaces that are defined further down in the file. And this is the hard part, and, I, and I'm sorry about that. It took me a while uh, to kind of understand these files and the best tools to use to manipulate them. And again, that's why I referenced back in that getting started slide, a good place just to get your feet wet and, and, and understand the fundamentals of this and get some examples that you can use to modify to fit your environment. So this is the hardest part. Any type of auto automation usually is, is kind of getting this part of it done. And once you get it done and correct, Actually running it is, and there, you'll define the labels. I'll show you the cloud formation. We'll use this file in the cloud formation application. I just want to kind of give you an example of some of the information that's stored in this file. So, for example, there is a, a mapping section where you can specify the VSRX you know, instance type that you want to load and the actual Amazon machine image ID, which identifies which EC2 instance do you want me to launch. And in this case, this is the Amazon machine image ID for Juniper's virtual SRX firewall. That's what we want to launch in an AWS cloud environment, in our own uh, virtual private cloud. And it's all defined here, all of the interfaces, all of the subnets, right? And it's just simply JSON formatted data that can be processed by the AWS cloud formation application. Now that you've seen the actual cloud formation template, Let's look at the AWS CloudFormation application. I've already logged in. I have an account created. So I'm going to create a stack. The AWS CloudFormation application treats all of those individual resources in that file as a stack. And when it processes that CloudFormation template, all of the resources must successfully launch or everything is rolled back. So it's an atomic operation. So what I want to do is I want to upload a template file. Remember, we upload it to an S3 bucket. I, I can choose the file from my local system. The example file I'm using is called VSRX template. It's a JSON formatted file. I upload that, and then I click Next. And I'm going to be asked a series of questions. What do you want to call your stack? And you can give it a name that makes sense to you. Remember, in that, we just uploaded that cloud formation template, and there was a parameters section. And this was the instance type that we wanted to load. It also, when you launch instances in AWS, such as a VSRX instance, once that instance is running and then you want to access that running instance, you connect to it using SSH, and AWS only supports authenticating with the key pair. And so one of the things you will have to do before you launch your template is create an AWS key pair. There's some options about termination protection. Do you want to be prompted if somebody shuts this instance down? In that cloud formation template, the management subnet, the CIDR block, the different subnet ranges, it's already defined in the template. You can modify these values here, but the idea of the template is it's already defined. So I like those values. There are some additional options you can configure. I don't really need to do that for the purpose of this learning bite. I'm not going to configure any tags or advanced options. Tags are essentially labels that you can assign to your resources so they're easy to identify later. You, you get to review the values, the parameters that are going to be used to generate the components in your stack. But now I'm going to click Create Stack. 
and we'll begin the process of process, cloud formation, processing that cloud formation template and actually creating the individual resources. So we can see our stack. The creation of our stack is already in progress. I can hit the refresh button and I can see the individual components, information about the individual components that are actually being created. The virtual private cloud, the IP addresses, the internet gateway, all of these components that are defined in that cloud formation template. It will take a few minutes for all of those resources to be instantiated, so I'll pause the video and we'll pick up once all of the resources have been created. Okay, here we are a couple minutes later, and I can, I've can i refreshed the output, and I can see that the stack creation is complete. So all of the individual components defined in my cloud formation template are there, are available. They were successfully deployed. Remember, it's atomic, and if any one of those individual components was incorrectly formatted in that file, I couldn't process it, and every individual component would be rolled back or torn down. So let's go see some of the components. I'm going to go to the EC2 dashboard on AWS, and I should be able to see my VSRX instance. You know, I, I have two Elastic IP addresses that have been assigned. I have one instance that's actually running. I have security groups that have been created. Let me click on the instances option here in the EC2 dashboard menu. There's my VSRX instance. It is running. The, the status checks have passed. If I actually click on the instance itself, I'll be able to see the IP address of that instance. Here's the subnets that I created that have been associated with that particular instance. I can connect to the running instance. Right Here's the public IP address that was assigned. Here is the management and the allow all security group. I didn't configure any load balancers or auto scaling groups. So this is an example of using cloud formation and cloud formation templates to automate the deployment of a VSRX instance. Now I can go back to cloud formation and one of the neat things about using cloud formation and creating the stack is you have the ability once you're done to delete the stack. And once you do that, all of the resources that were created will automatically be destroyed and you'll return to the initial state of your AWS environment. In this learning by you learned how to deploy VSRX instances using AWS cloud formation. Thank you very much. Visit the Juniper Education Services website to learn more about courses. View our full range of classroom, online, and e-learning courses, learning paths, industry segment and technology specific training paths, Juniper Networks certification program, the ultimate demonstration of your competence, and the training community. From forums to social media, join the discussion.